Welcome back to Open Line and welcome the legend that is John Porter, regular TNT contributor now, social commentator and co-host of the brilliant Chasing Descent. Uh, make sure you follow him at A Collator and check out Chasing Descent on all major streaming platforms as well. He's here to discuss uh, a story from A&E. It was released over the weekend. Uh, a woman 39 years old was found unconscious during a seven hour wait uh, during during uh, A&E. Uh, she did later die for three days later, uh, which is absolutely horrendous. She suffered a hemorrhage. She went there with a headache. There was three nurses that did check on her. By the time she was called, uh, she was already unconscious. Uh, this is not good enough, is it, John? People essentially dying while waiting in, in our A&E departments. Well, as Rick says, I'm not happy, and but us Scottish aren't happy at the best of times. But anyway, <laughs> yeah. I thought your Welsh was—I thought your Welsh accent was all right, Rick. By the way, <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, yeah. To to be serious here, yeah, it, it's not good enough. But you know, the NHS isn't good enough these days. But the question is why? Because we're pumping 1.2 billion into the NHS every three days. That's an aircraft carrier every week. Every week. That's 52 aircraft carriers every year. So why is it not good enough? So the question is, like everything, we're dealing with in in incomplete information here when it comes to this particular lady. So she's turned up at A&E. Now, do you remember the adverts? The golden hour? You know, if something goes wrong, you really need to be in hospital or seeing a medical professional within that golden hour because if you get oh, there yeah. quickly enough, you'll, your your chances of survival are vastly increased. Now, something's either going very wrong with the triage or the nurses haven't really paid that much attention. And you know what? I'm going to have a little go at the medical profession here, not particularly nurses, but uh, the medical profession, but as is my want, that's what I normally do. We upset the police last week. Let's have a go at the doctors today. Mm. <laughs> so what's happened with the NHS? Well, after 2020, um, GPs shut up their doors, didn't they? I mean, they shut their doors in 2020, um, and we never saw them. I had a neighbour who was a GP because I had a house at that point before we were ruined. But our GP neighbour disappeared to our holiday home in Skye for almost six months because she wasn't doing any work in her practice. That's what GPs were doing. And I don't think that was an isolated incident. I think that was pretty much what GPs are doing. And they've got used to it because since I came back from France, I've been here, you know, what, over a, over a year and a half. I haven't seen a doctor. I've registered with a doctor. I've been for checkups, but I've never seen an actual doctor. Why? Yeah. Because you used to used to be able to go to the doctor and you would get properly triaged because the doctor would look at you and go, right, OK, you're worrying about nothing. You know, just just go home, put your feet up for a couple of days, have keep yourself you know, hydrated and you'll be fine. But now everybody expects that little bit extra, don't they? So they all want antibiotics, even if it's a virus. They all want to be seen immediately. So they don't go to the doctor anymore because you can't go to the doctor. They go to the hospitals and the hospitals get packed with people waiting. What was it that Nottingham Hospital said? Sometimes there's 80 people waiting in A&E. Mm -hmm. No. Yeah, John, I was just going to say, I was there, la I was, um, there yeah. last week at A&E in Reading. Um, it was so packed. I've never seen anything like it. I mean, this story is close to my heart anyway, because yeah. anyone that's uh, been listening to the show anyway knows I suffer from horrific tension headaches. Um, I probably saved my life, me calling an ambulance the last time in November, because this is very similar. When yeah. I last went in for A&E, I was triaged three times um, and... Uh, but it, it was a horrendous um, experience only because I had an ambulance out and two paramedics were they able to mm. then get me in blue lights, get me on a morphine drip, anti-sickness. Had I gone into A&E, I wonder if I could have been that woman because you're literally just told to go and wait. Mm -hmm. You're talking about trio. Yeah. But the staff aren't even there, John. They're, they're, they're literally, that, there isn't enough staff in the A&E to even look at the people. Uh, it's a horrendous that's exactly the problem, Natalie, because what we've done is we've replaced our doctors with A&E because our doctors yes. aren't really doing anything anymore. They're doing the odd call and whatever, and you've got to phone up. If, I mean, this crazy system where you have to phone before 8 o'clock to get an appointment for that day. Why not just make appointments like people can do anywhere else in the world, you know? Mm -hmm. I want to have a meeting with you, Natalie. Can I have a meeting next Tuesday at 2 o'clock? 
Yeah. You check your diary, you go, yeah, that's fine. You know, yeah, can't why can't we anymore. do that? Yeah, why can't no, we go uh, back to that? Why can't doctors do house calls anymore? Get a doc- yeah. Uh, Rick, yeah. Have you tried to get a doctor's appointment? Because it, uh, John's right where I am. Um, they won't even give you a time anymore. It will be sometime we'll call you in the afternoon. They can't even mm-hmm. give you a slot. For me yeah. personally, yeah. no. Thankfully, I haven't needed to. Uh, I've, I registered with a doctor recently whenever I moved house about you know eight months ago. I haven't needed to use the service yet. But last week, uh, John, we had a, I had a, a guest on, uh, Dr. Tech Kong. He was an ex-police surgeon and mm-hmm. an ex-NHS yeah. doctor. And I asked him the same question. Look, how has it got to this point that we're discussing a story like this? And he said, look, there's multiple prongs. The, the, what you brought up there, uh, the lack of GP availability means more people are going mm-hmm. to hospitals. The lack of competent managers in hospitals to be able to mm-hmm. process people when they're coming in staff shortages is another one people going off long-term sick people calling in sick staff not being there there's not enough staff to actually deal with this influx of people and sadly records are being broken because another story I covered off with him uh, last week was there's a hospital in limerick limerick university hospital in uh in um, the republic of ireland uh the, they're breaking records week on week with trolley weights it was up to 140 mm-hmm. people last week on trolleys in the corridors waiting to be admitted into the hospitals. Yeah. Think about that. 140 trolleys yeah. in the corridors waiting for beds. Shocking state of affairs altogether. But that just seems to be uh, the trajectory that the NHS is currently on. Mm-hmm. It does. It does. And, and the question is, how do you stop it? Well, I think I think we go back to basics again. I think mm-hmm. we go back to actually using doctors and GPs as doctors and GPs. You know, see patients, triage them. Let them know whether they need to go to hospital or not, because you can't use the hospitals as a mass unit, because that's effectively what we're trying to do now. And and sometimes I think hospitals and doctors, to a certain degree, have got themselves to blame because they pander to their patients now. Whereas a doctor used to go, I right, give them a hot toddy and go to bed, you know. Now it, it's do this, do that, because they're frightened. They're frightened of getting sued. You know, I used to say we're 20 years behind America. We're probably slightly slightly more than that when it came to suing our medical profession. But effectively, that's where we are now. Doctors are frightened to do anything because they're going to get sued if they make a slight mistake. And that doesn't Uh, help, you know. Yeah, and I was going to say, John, another problem is that people are actually uh, in A&E in beds. Uh, My nan died, people know, a couple of weeks ago. She was actually in an A&E bed waiting to die because she was absolutely at the end of life. But they had no beds in the rest of the hospital. So you've actually got beds in A&E to get taken up by people who are at end of life. I mean, that's just another huge problem, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. And and it's like Rick says, the problem is mismanagement because there's plenty of money in the NHS. You don't need to throw any more money at it. What you need to do is use that money effectively. Stop paying people to play pianos in the foyer, you know. Stop having an art director that curates the, the, the works of art that you're going to put on the walls. You know, yeah. let's get back to basics. Let's go back yeah. to the 50s and 60s and do things properly. Get a matron, you know, triage yeah. people. And if they don't need to be there, send them home. Mm. Yeah, and I think face-to-face appointments, because, uh, yeah, you were saying like GPs, uh, where my Mm. uh, GP surgery is, they're still not doing face-to-face appointments. You have to beg to see somebody. So if if everybody across the country has only been seeing over the phone, John, how it's not people aren't going to get picked up on serious illnesses, (laughs) are they? It's like crazy because you go to the doctor for something, and, and there's the other thing, because now they're saying you can only go with one issue. If you've got yeah. two issues, you have to make two separate uh, appointments. I mean, come on. You go to the doctor or something and he picks up something else, like Charlie did, because Charlie wasn't in for cancer, was he? No, Charlie was he in wasn't. for something else, and they said, oh, you've got cancer. Could you make another appointment and come back and see us <laughs> next week? You know, that no. didn't happen, did it? But that's what they no. want us to do. Yeah, can you can you imagine for the older people? They've got ten ailments. They'll have to take up mm-hmm. ten uh, the ten appointments. Yeah. Uh, nobody else, nobody young can be seen. Uh, the whole the whole system is absolutely ridiculous. But we that have run out broken. of time. I'm sure we could we I'm sure we could go on for the rest of the show talking oh, about could, the broken yeah. NHS. Yeah. Absolutely. But thanks to John again, and don't forget you can follow him on X at A Calator and uh, get watch all the Chasing Descent shows because they are absolutely brilliant with him and Ben. But we have to take a break now here on today's News Talk and plenty of more headline stories to cover on TNT.